Hello, let's do a Phantom Necromancer um, Heal build. I was playing this in the China release, and it was decent. The thing is, I was never lacking neither single tide heals, neither AoE heals. How good Necro heal is gonna be later in the game, I can't say. But at least in the early game, I had no issues at all. So, let's start with the attributes. And the main one is crit, Omni equal cooldown, Intelligence, Focus, and Stamina. Before going into talents, I want to talk about the skills. So the main one is Soul Herb, that's a single target healing. Soul Draw is a skill that also generates vitality, which we need for the Tura Flowers. And Soul Draw is really good when there is a lot of trash around. It's in dungeons and in the some of the raids. What happens is that it deals damage and restores HP from the damage dealt. And it's not capped on one target, you can actually do damage to five targets and heal for five times the amount. Tainted Soul has a longer cooldown, but it generates 10 Vitality. 10 Vitality means one exactly the Tura Flower. But it heals a lot, but at the same time, you lose 50% of the healing done. So you need to be ready to top it up again. Soul Link is a crowd healing. It's a damage taken reduction. And what it does, it shares the damage between the targets and shares the healing between the targets, plus increases physical defense. And for each Datura Flower that we have, it's gonna link to one more ally, and we have four Datura Flowers, so with four Datura Flowers, we're gonna be able to link to full party, that is five people. And this is really nice if you know the mechanics, because you can avoid pretty significant amount of damage. Burning Soul is a big cooldown that heals for a lot, and at the same time, it increases max HP. Soul Dance is basically a really big cooldown that procs a lot of healings on a 2 minute cooldown. You want this one to use on big damage that most of the time happens in the rains during the intermissions. So, in order to generate the Throw Flowers, we need to gain Vitality. And Tainted Soul and Soul Draw generates Vitality, so we always want to keep those both skills on cooldowns. At the same time, Soul Link in generates our Inscribe Stone energy. And Inscribe Stone energy itself, whenever you activate it, it's an X for me. It converts our Soul Herb to Soul Blossom. It makes it an AoE skill that heals every single target. At the same time, Soul Link has an extra damage reduction. So you want to use your Inscribe Stone state whenever you have to heal a lot and you don't have your Soul Dance cooldown. Talents, I'm going to show them from the beginning. So, you want to start with Soul Herb Plus. Then go into Zest, as our main attribute is crit, and we're going to crit quite a bit with this build, so that extra healing is really nice. After that, we want Burning Soul. So, after we use Burning Soul, our next Soul Herb is going to generate additional Detour of Flamel which is big, and it increases healing at the same time. So this is going to be one of our rotations. Next one is Tainted Soul, Wild Loom. So what it does, whenever you're going to cast Tainted Soul on the target that's, that is infl inflicted with Soul Link, you're going to restore an additional health. And if the target is not inflicted with Soul Link, next Soul Draw is going to generate four more Vitality. So this is just generation of the Tura Flowers. After that, we want to come back and pick up healing. As at this stage, those three extra percents from the Soul Herb is going to mean a lot. After that, we want to pick up Soul Draw Plus, as this is a big single target healing whenever there is a lot of trash, and 12% more damage just means 12% more heals. After that, it's a Rejuvenate, just more healing with Soul Herb when the target is on low HP, and that increases our crit rate at the same time. After that, you can go into Soul Link that grants extra damage reduction. If you can precast your Soul Link and you know the mechanics, this is going to be a really nice damage reduction. After that, go into Flourish. Flourish is easy, the Tura Flowers, whenever you are in combat. After that, Soul Dance. Soul Dance is going to generate another, the Tura Flower. After that, just Soul Dance, more healing for that, as you're going to need that healing for big AoE damages in the raids. And with the last three points, pick up Beacon, because Beacon is actually not a multiplier, it's a flat multiplier, so I have 
And if I'm gonna do this, I am 31.3. So this is this node is really good. For the passives, the main one is renewal. That basically whenever we crit with Solver, we get one extra vitality. And every four the two flowers collected, our soul herb gonna become soul blossom, which is an AoE heal. That's a important to remember. Omni is basically increasing the HP on the targets that are affected by soul draw. Whenever you heal a target with the soul draw, it, it recovers additional HP depending on how much attack you have. This one is a burning soul, whenever it adds additional damage reduction whenever the target is affected by the burning soul. And this one is just critical damage is increased by 10%. So crit heals, there's a little bit more heals. After that, there is a reason why I didn't pick up some of these talents and I want to explain that. So firmness is not a good talent because it grants shield equal to 33% of your attack. And at this stage of the game, my attack is only 560. So it's really a minuscule amount of extra healing that doesn't do much. So that's the main reason I, why I don't pick, pick it up. At three points, it's actually 100%, but it's still not enough. If you are struggling with the um, single target heals, you can pick up Tainted Soul Plus. It's basically gonna increase more healing and decrease the penalty that I talked about, which is 50%. So you can reduce it to quite much lower. For the Burning Soul Plus, it's also a nice one. It provides more max HP for, for the duration, and it at the same time increases HP recovery. So for a single target healing on a big damage taken on the tanks, this could be a good one. Self-healing soul is ex self-explanatory, but I don't know, cause you, we generate quite a bit of soul blossoms, and with soul blossom you heal yourself, so Unless you're picking up a lot of damage and you like learning some of the raid mechanics, this this could be some extra healing. Otherwise, I don't suggest to pick that up. Let's talk about rotations. So basically, the best opener to generate as many the Tour of Flowers early as you can is this. It's Burning Soul, Tainted Soul, Soul Draw, and then Soul Herb for that additional one extra. And then you can only spam Soul Herbs, Soul Draw, and that generates for the Tour of Flowers. That means our Soul Herb becomes Soul Blossom. This is our first AoE heal. Then we want to use Soul Link. And that's going to generate second Soul Blossom. So the main idea is you most of the times want to go for four the Tora Flowers to get our first Soul Blossom. Then use Soul Link and get another Soul Blossom. So those two Soul Blossoms is going to be our main AoE heal and main rotation for that. For the single target healing rotation, there is nothing much you can actually do, because most likely, you're always going to keep your skills on the cooldown, and they don't have any other interaction. The only thing I can say, that Soul Draw is really strong and a priority heal on a single target when there is a lot of trash around. Otherwise, you just want to keep Soul Draw, Tainted Soul on cooldown, and if there is a big damage, you want to use your Burning Soul for the single target heal as, in, as it increases max HP also, and it's quite a big of a heal. After that, there is nothing much you can do. Just manage your AoE heals, manage your Dora Flowers, and you're gonna be good. Soul Dance is only during the intermissions on when, or when people taking a lot of damage. But the problem is, during Soul Dance, you can't move. Remember that. Nor jump, nor move, or it's gonna interrupt it. There is some... Either way, at some point, when your Soul Dance is on cooldown, and you need a lot of AoE healing, and you need to move at the same time, it's time for the Inscribe Stone. As Inscribe Stone is gonna convert your Soul Herb into Soul Blossom for 6 seconds. And it's gonna increase effectiveness of your Soul Link. So if you press the Inscribe Stone, you can just spam your Soul Blossoms. Every single Soul Herb is a Soul Blossom, so that's a lot of AoE healing. At the same time, you can do Soul Link if there is a lot of damage incoming. You can reduce the damage and just pump Soul Blossoms. S special Aptitudes. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it, but the only thing you need to know is that Soul Guard doesn't work on this build, as our build is Tainted Soul. This is the main thing to remember, basically. Which one is the best? It's gonna be this epic one, Soul Herb Healing, plus increases Echo Recharge. This one you want to have. Everything else, just pick up whatever you can. This basically sums up the Phantom Necromancer 
thing that's all build. If there is some changes, I'm gonna post those in the description. If there is a big nerfs or buffs, I'm just gonna do a follow-up video. At the same time, on the global release, I'm gonna play a Necromancer, but at the same time, I'm gonna do Bard and Priest. And I'm gonna do builds on those two, but those are gonna take a little bit of time. And right now, guys, I'm gonna give, leave you with the Ancient 3 Elite run that I did two days ago. You can see my rotations. I did some mistakes, but still managed to heal it. So did you have fun? I hope I got you interested into Phantom Necromancer. If not, my bad. But hopefully, see you in the next one.